What's going on everyone? Welcome back. As you can see, we got a lot of progress and also a lot of mess in the garage. But today's video, I'm gonna give you guys an update on the kayak build and some of the new additions that I've added. Let's go. This is the reality of doing a kayak build. Got tools everywhere, parts everywhere. I mean, wiring, bunch of tools to rig out the kayak. On this table over here, we have just so much more random stuff, wiring loom, tools, batteries, extra parts, all that things. And yeah, we got a big update on the kayak build. I actually started rigging out the kayak and getting all the electrical stuff out of the way. And this is how the kayak sits right now. Now I will say this is phase one of the kayak build. We have some other things that I need to add. Still waiting for some things to get in, but I pretty much use a bunch of stuff from last year to really just finish wrapping up the build and then I will make adjustments later such as this H-rail crossbar of mine. This is the one that I custom built last year. I'm using it for now, but I do have a different crossbar that's coming in, just waiting for some other stuff. I've actually been debating about running dual grass up front, but I'm gonna stick to what I believe in. I never liked sitting in the seat and actually reaching so far forward to navigate through my grass. Like setting waypoints, adjusting between screens. I always like having one graph right next to me. That way I can do all those functions and I don't have to really reach from here all the way forward to do that. I still think that is the best thing. And it's always nice having this to rest my net on so that my fish do not jump off the board. One of the new additions to the kayak is this Catch Jake plate. This one was actually sent to me from a subscriber, Trey McNeil. He was actually our 2000 subscriber giveaway winner. And he asked me if I could use this on the build, I told him, Definitely can, and he sent this this way. So this is an aluminum replacement for the original stock plastic one. So this one, the stock is flimsy. I have always damaged these. So this one is full aluminum. And I mean, this thing is sturdy. Like this graph is never gonna go anywhere. I like that addition. This was actually perfect because this is gunmetal and it actually somewhat matches or H rail on the Hobies as well. I really went through and redid some of my wiring, replaced some of my wiring loom from the last build. I love this, it helps protect the wires. I mean, we're always banging things around inside of the kayak and obviously you don't want to damage these wires. This wiring loom is super cheap, get it from Amazon. Got that all replaced straight to my units on both sides. But yeah, once again, I'll be running both of my Lowrance Elite FS9s. I had great experience with them last year. We'll continue running them. Of course, we have our Lowrance 0.1 GPS antenna so that our heading sensor is true to the front of the kayak. It helps with fishing offshore. Definitely a must if you're very into using your mapping. But we got Yakutai 9 degree mounts about that. And yeah, this thing is not going to go anywhere. If you watched the last video, you know that we got a battery sponsor for this year. And that's Dakota Lithium. I've only ran Dakota Lithium. I've had great experiences with them. So I'm excited to say that they're on board for this kayak build. 12 volt, 25 amp hour, 12 volt, 46 amp hour. And we got duplicates of both of them. So one new thing I'm trying this year is running two batteries to help isolate my power so I don't have voltage drop. And my 46 amp hour I've found fits right underneath the seat right there between the seat posts, the scuppers, and yeah, that's the perfect place. I still need to put foam in between so that it doesn't obviously get damaged. But for now, I definitely know that it fits right there. Now this battery is only used to supply both of my graphs and also like my lighting and stuff like that. And I'm actually gonna be using the 25 amp hour just to run my active target module. But one new thing I'm also trying out is this wiring harness. It's kind of hard to see, but this is a pre-built wiring harness from Connect Ease. This one specifically is for their graph mount. This is actually a kayak built harness and they have these Anderson plugs. So whenever I need to charge, I can easily just unplug them and pull that battery inside the charge and then obviously throw them in. Quick disconnect, which is really nice. I've always hated unscrewing this little nut or in this case, this bolt every time I need to pull the battery out to charge. You know, sometimes we stay at places where you just can't run an extension cord to your kayak. So sometimes I have to take this out and it's nice that you can easily disconnect. But yeah, this harness is in there. It's all wired up. It's nice marine gray construction. I got that wired to obviously all my graphs and going through all the through holes out of the kayak 
to where they need to go. I still need to wire it up. And here we have our 25 amp hour with the camshaft that actually is connected to this hatch bin. So this thing definitely will not go anywhere. This is pretty much the last thing I need to wire. I'm gonna run the wire obviously out of there from my Active Target 2 module. And then I will use this part from Connect E so that I can easily, again, quickly disconnect and bring that battery inside if I have to. One big difference from this kayak and last year is that last year I used the Yak Power lighting and you have to drill holes. So I had to drill holes on the side of the kayak. This year, I went with a cheaper option and that's LED adhesive strips right on the side right there. So I don't have to drill any holes. That provides plenty of lighting and will definitely get the job done. And I just ran the wiring through that rod tube. And on this side, I have it running actually behind this one objective plate. This is a block off plate. And in there I have my through hole system to put my transducer cord for my front facing sonar. So I'm running Active Target 2. The nice thing about that is I can easily pull my transducer wiring out and remove my sniper pull and also my wiring for my Active Target 2 out if I don't need it for the day. Now I'm waiting for my new sniper pull to get in, but for now I'll be running this for the show with that fishing specialties mount, but we're gonna have a cool new six setup coming soon. Inside the hatch is mostly the same thing, one objective plate with our Active Target 2 module and our Yak Power, which controls all of our lighting. At some point, I'll probably add a USB to the kayak so that I have a way to charge because I got a bunch of extra ports I can use, but for now, we're gonna leave it. That'll be later down the road. So again, the cool thing about this is these Anderson plugs, you can just connect them just like that. And now we got power. And obviously when we want to take the battery out, just quickly disconnect just like that. Now ignore the mess in the bin. I have not cleaned this out since last year. I do need to do that. But my Yak Power little controllers right here, obviously lights. So we have our lighting right there. I feel like this is the perfect amount of lighting that I need just for those early mornings. I don't think I need more than that. And up front for navigational lights, we do have this adhesive lighting as well. Of course, green on this side and red on the other. Like I said, I like not drilling holes, so I feel like this is the best option. This is all waterproof stuff, and if this does get damaged, you know, I slam this front end of the kayak into a stump or a dock, I can easily replace this. It's super easy. As you can see, we get about 13 to 12.9 volts on the graph. That is for both units. One of the reasons why I wanted to run two batteries is to see if I can get a little bit better clarity on my front facing sonar in the front. And as of right now, we got a good voltage. That's with all the lighting on and that's the most I'm gonna have in this kayak. I don't need to add a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. That's all that I need. And hopefully with the separate battery, I won't get voltage drop and I'll be able to get good clarity on that graph moving forward. But yeah, here's an example of that 0.1 GPS antenna, the heading sensor. Usually if your GPS does not have it, that arrow is just gonna keep spinning everywhere trying to find your GPS location. So we're gonna move the kayak and you're gonna see the direction move with it. You can see right there. Now we're facing a different direction. Obviously the kayak is not where it's supposed to be, but that's an example of why that heading sensor is so important. This really comes in handy if you're an offshore angler like myself, you like fishing offshore, let's say if I have a waypoint on a brush pile in front of me, I know if I'm facing towards it or not. Without that, this thing would just keep spinning around and I'd be lost in the middle of nowhere. It's definitely key to have if you like to fish offshore or plan to. But yeah, I want to give you guys a quick update on the kayak build. I know a lot of things similar to last year, but like I said, this is just phase one. I have some other things that I'm going to be changing up, some new parts getting in, but I really just need to get this thing as completed as possible for the Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show. This will be displayed in the Hobie booth with Next Adventure at the show, and it's going to be something that a lot of people can come up and see what a fully rigged out kayak looks like. Also, the next thing we need to add is this quick disconnect for connect ease. We need to add this to the kayak so that my Active Target 2 module is fully functioning. So with that being said, let's get this thing installed. So installing this connect ease quick disconnect is gonna be super easy. Obviously positive negative to the battery. I'll probably end up running mine like this. And then I have my leads from my Active Target 2 module that will get attached to here just with these connectors or heat shrink wrap. So it'll be perfect. That'll keep it all watertight. And then obviously just plug them together. We have our hardware that came with the battery. Let's get this mounted up real quick. Boom, just like that, it's ready. Now we just gotta get this all crimped on to our connectors. 
and yeah, should be good to go. Now that they're all crimped on, we just gotta get our heat gun and apply some heat. And this is all heat shrink wrap, so it'll keep it all watertight. There we go, just like that, it's all good to go. One thing I do like to add is that wire loom, so I'm gonna grab that real quick. This wire loom right here is a nice way to protect your wires. As you guys saw, I have this kind of like everywhere on my kayak. Any wire that's exposed, I mean, this is not sharp by any means, but the wires running through them all the time, it could wear them down theoretically. So I'm gonna wrap all this up. Got our wiring loom, now it looks way cleaner and we can just connect this battery. I usually like to have this a little bit longer because if I do need to pull this hatch out, let's say to take out my Active Target 2 wiring, I still have that extra space just in case. I can already hear the transducer working, but let's turn this on just to make sure. Well, we're not in the water, so obviously you're not gonna get any clarity, but I do see that it's working. And with that guys, that is the update on the kayak build. As I said, this is phase one. We needed to get this thing done for the sportsman show but we'll have phase two coming up. We'll be changing some things. I tell you what though, it feels good to have the wiring and all the electronics done. This is something that takes a little bit of time, but I enjoy it because if something does go wrong on the water, I know where every single wire is going in this kayak and usually I can figure out how to diagnose it myself. But in the next video, we're gonna install our new Torquedo motor on the back, get our foot control steering set up. And after that, we only have a few things to do. Obviously we need to get this thing registered and then get through the sportsman show. And after that, I can get this thing wet. The plan for the end of the month is to take this out to something called the Sturgeon Social. It's a local community event over here and a bunch of kayak anglers get out and chase dinosaurs white sturgeon and i'm excited for that i haven't caught one out of a kayak before so i think that'll be a fun video just horsing on some four five six foot fish i'm just excited that the fishing season is finally back around the weather's getting warmer and that means we can get out on the water as always i appreciate you guys for watching i got you on the next one peace <laughs>